What is up guys? It is Bob Blah Blah, Blah and welcome to the Gun Review. Today we are talking about the Scar L. The legend comes back from Modern Warfare 2 and in that game this gun was awesome. It was a slight variant of this gun but it was still the Scar. It had a very similar look and a very similar feel. The rankings so far we have finished six of the guns. I'm not going to name them all because you can read them right there but we are almost done. We're down to the top four so let's get right into the SCAR. Now one thing I want to discuss real quick, this is a gameplay on Outpost. It is a Moab. I was actually really stoked to get this because I never play Outpost. I don't think I've ever posted a gameplay on Outpost. Usually we skip it. I just don't like the map at all. I was playing solo, I jumped into a game of Kill Confirmed, and I got a Moab, but I didn't expect it because I don't really know this map because I played it so little. So I was pretty happy with it even though I just kind of run around the map and uh, use my stick and move technique of just trying to figure out where the enemy is and uh, laying low being a little stealthy. So I was pretty happy about that, but one thing I want to address is people have asked me, why do I ignore tags when I play Kill Confirmed? Well, guys, I don't. you don't see all the games where I'm getting lots of tags. The games you, you see are usually Moab gameplays, and in those gameplays, yeah, I'm not trying to get a ton of tags. And the reason is, if you play a lot of Kill Confirmed, you know this happens a lot, you'll often run out of uh, tags, and the game will end. So if, once you get 65 tags, the game ends, and I'll be at like 18 kill streaks or 21 in the game ends. It's really frustrating. So actually when I'm going for Moabs, I don't aggressively go for tags unless we're going to lose the game. And then I get aggressive and start getting every tag that I can. So with that address, let's jump right into the SCAR. Uh, the ammo per mag is 30 and the starting ammo is 90. This is tied for second. And that is pretty much standard in the, in the entire category, as I've mentioned many times now. The rate of fire is 750 rounds per minute. This is in fifth place, really middle ground, not exceptional, but not bad in any way. The damage close is where things get interesting. It's 35, which is 9th out of 10th. That's not very good, guys. However, it's still it's still a 3-bullet kill, which is tied with most of the fully automatic assault rifles. So being at 35 isn't like a death sentence to the gun. Uh, and it does have a 1.5 headshot multiplier, which is above the 1.4 that most of them have. However, in practice, it doesn't mean much. It's still a 3-bullet kill up close. And even if you get one headshot, it's still a 3-bullet kill. The damage far is 20, which is a 5-bullet kill. And that is tied for 8th. Once again, not a great number. Not horrible because a lot of the guns are 5 bullet kills, but certainly not amazing. The time to kill close is in 6th place at .16. Once again, another number that just doesn't look that good. So far, I've given you numbers that are 9th and 8th and 6th. Hmm, interesting. But uh, yeah, it is .16. It's not that great. It's not horribly bad or anything, but you're definitely going to be outsh outshined by some of the faster killing guns. The time to kill far is .32, which ranks it in 8th place. Another poor rating for this gun. Now, once again, you guys are probably thinking, wait a second, this gun has to be in the top 4. Why are these rankings so low for everything? Well, the next stat kind of changes a lot, of the, a lot of the ways to look at this gun. I've given you some stats saying that it doesn't kill that fast up close, and it doesn't kill that fast far away. However, what this gun does have is a really, really good drop-off range. The drop-off close range is 29 meters. What that means is you're going to be able to kill with three bullets for a long distance. It's first in the category. And so basically, as guys get farther away, you're still going to get that three-bullet kill. So, And its drop-off far is 43 meters, which is tied for fifth. Not amazing, but solid. So what that means is, yeah, up close, there are guns that are going to beat this. And at long distance, there are guns going to beat this. But this is actually probably the best mid-range assault rifle out there. When you have guys right in that middle ground, you're going to dominate them because you're going to have a really fast time to kill because you're getting that three-bullet kill, really, like I said, all the way out to 29 meters. The reload time is 2.4, which is fifth, which um, is a solid number, puts it right in the middle, means you're not going to take too long to recoil, but it's not, not really near as fast as the first place uh, assault rifle. So guys, having looked at all that, the stats, they're good, they're solid, but they're not overwhelming, and some of the stats are borderline bad. Uh, so how could this gun be in the top four? Well, the next thing I want to talk about is the recoil. The recoil on this gun is, it's interesting when you look at the actual pattern. You see there, it looks like it recoils quite a, quite a bit to the right. But I want you to watch this gameplay and tell me if you think that it actually does that. Well, it does, but it's so manageable because... Now, I don't really know why. It's just really manageable recoil. It's very predictable. It's super, super easy to handle. I feel like when I'm shooting at someone with this gun, I just stick to them. I never worry about the recoil at all. And almost everyone I know who uses SCAR says the same thing. It's basically a laser, even though it's official recoil plot, makes it look like it recoils quite a bit to the right. But in practice, like I said, guys, almost no recoil. Super easy to manage. One of the easiest manage, ma to manage guns in the game. Now, one thing that is a huge plus to this gun that really you can't put a number on is the iron sights. Now, iron sights, I've always said this, guys, 
iron sights are a very personal decision, whether you like them or not. Some iron sights people love, others don't, but this gun, in my opinion, has the best iron sights in the game. They take up very little of your screen, you get almost full range of vision, and you can see almost everything going on, and that's what you want out of your sights. The SCAR sight, to me, just targets people so well. I feel like my accuracy goes up 50% when I'm using the iron sights on this gun. What that means is it frees yourself up to always use two attachments or a proficiency. You don't have to um, waste waste a spot using something you don't need, like a red dot or a holographic sight, because the iron sights are so damn good on this gun. Now, once again, this is a personal preference, but for me, since this does have the best iron sights, that means I never have to worry about using a red dot on this gun, which I can means I can always use a proficiency or two attachments, and that's a huge bonus. Let's segue right from that into what setup I use on this gun. Now, I'm going to be honest. Normally, I give you two or three setups, but with this gun, I will be straight up. I only use one setup. That's silencer extended mags. And the reason is the extended mags gives you that extra ammo, which means you're going to kill more people and be able to spray a little more, and the silencer keeps you off the red dot. But because of the excellent range drop-off this gun has, what that means is you're not going to feel a huge impact from using a silencer. You're actually going to keep your damage for a long distance, and you're not going to hardly notice <clears throat> the silencer in action at all. And, and that's, a, that's just a huge bonus, guys. Now watch this. If you guys don't think you need a headset, you see that? I heard that guy running through that building, okay? So a headset, guys, even in Kill Confirmed, I mean, in Free For All and Search, it's a huge plus. But even in Kill Confirmed, I heard that guy running on the tin floor in there. In fact, you can hear it if you go back and listen to that. That's the power of having a good set headset in this game. So, like I said, I really only use Silencer Extended Max with this gun. And, man, I love getting Moabs. Even though everyone gets Moabs these days, and they're not that, uh, they're not that rare, I still love them. Um, but, yeah, guys, so you see that. You see how um, the, the recoil is handled. You see the iron sights. That, you combine everything, and that's why I put it in fourth place. And, like I said, at the end of the day... These ratings have to come from you. They have to come from when you use the gun, how do you rank it yourself, and hey guys, I would rather use this gun than the six below it, and it's as simple as that, and that's why I rank this gun where I rank it. It's a really, really good gun. It's not as used as I would expect it to be, but I think you guys will like it if you give it a, give it a chance. Um, but once again, I do rank this gun in fourth. So there's the end of the gameplay, a nice little 30, I think 33 and 0 flawless Moab gameplay on a map that I don't like. So I will take that. Uh, let me know what gun you think will come in third place, which will be the next gun I review. And of course, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. And I will talk to you guys next time on the gun review. Take it easy.